Hey, we've got a Rambo 27. Um, it's kind of an unusual boat outside of Southeast Florida and we travel a lot with it. Um, and we get questions wherever we go. So at the boat ramps and, um, down the road, people are flagging us down, wanting to walk through it. So thought I'd put together a quick video, um, just to, to show you what's, what's different about the boat. And, and, uh, for those of you who are interested, hope it helps. So uh, I've got a family of young kids and we take a lot of people out um, and we're looking for a simple boat that doesn't cost too much money and gets the job done. And this is, this is pretty much it. So it's 27 feet long. It's real narrow um, by a lot of people's standards. Um, one of the things that's really unique about it that, that you either love or you don't is that it's a pretty shallow dead rise boat. Uh, so as you can see, um, it is, I don't know, something like 12 degrees. I'm not sure, but it's nothing like a contender or CV or Jupiter or something like that. So people, people, some people are disappointed cause they're, they're expecting a big, heavy, um, uh, deep V center console ride. But I personally love this. It's more like a down East or a old aqua sport where it planes off really, really early. Uh, so it'll run, um, 18 knots to 25 knots all day long uh, gets on a plane really really early and it's got a great cruise to it um, so I, I actually run a Yamaha 200 uh, which or sorry a Suzuki 200 which is uh, most people run 300s but um, this boat tops out at about 43 miles an hour and it gets like four and a quarter miles per gallon cruise at about 25 knots which is where we spend most of our time and uh, so uh, if you're wondering how much it draws, <clears throat> so there's usually a water line that comes up right about here. So this boat floats in about 12 inches of water, maybe even less, which is pretty unusual for a 27 foot long boat. And being in Florida, uh, that works pretty good for us. So uh, you can see it's, it's pretty simple, uh, nothing to it. Tow it with a 1500 series pickup truck, no problem at all. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll do a walkthrough of the inside, but it's got a real deep, deep entry. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're just the type of person who likes to, likes to put the throttle down in three foot seas, it probably won't work out for you too well. But if you know how to use trim tabs and take it easy, um, boat rides real well. And if you're willing to slow down a little bit, it's, uh, it's great. So, all right, let me crawl. All right. So we're looking inside. If you're the type of person who likes sinks and toilets and fancy LED lights and uh, countertops and all sorts of stuff like that in their boats, it's not, not the boat for you. It's pretty straightforward, as you can tell. Tons of duct space. Um, no cushions, really easy to keep clean. You just spray it out when you're done, call it a day. And that's, that's what we like about it because we use this boat all the time. It's coming up in its third year and uh, we use it about 50 times a year. And we take it to the Keys, to the west coast of Florida for scalloping. So we make a lot of family memories in the boat and, uh, and we really love it. So you can see nothing to it. Um, big scuppers, they're about six inches above the water line. So water comes right out. Uh, under gunnel rod storage, see like that. Um, I've got a real super simple console with a bird saw leaning post. That's about the only thing I splurged on. Other than that, it's a pretty super base model boat. Um, I actually ordered it with no rigging in it. I rigged it myself to save a little bit of money. Um, so you can see down below, it's, it's really super, super simple. Um, it's here. Uh, I got the console cover down in here. So, yep. So great, uh, huge, you know, kids can change, wives can go to the bathroom. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is really easy to access. As you can see, there's no crawling around in the bilge to get to wiring and battering. Um, you can see it's got, got in, in deck dock storage, deck storage rather. If you open these up. So you can see nothing, nothing to it. It's pretty deep. Uh, I love any boat that was designed to receive a five gallon bucket. That's the greatest storage device known to man and it's real disappointing anytime you have a boat 
that's like a half inch shy of being able to hold a five gallon bucket. Um, but anyway, this isn't one of them. This, this holds a five gallon bucket, no problem. I did spring for the Suzuki gauges and the fuel tank gauges, which was a pretty big mistake. Um, what I find much better is, is this. So it's just a stick with some notches on it. You can see, and uh, you just put it down in there, pull it out, and you can see I know I got 25 gallons worth of gas in that tank. And it's not, it's not too, uh, it's not, it's not too problematic. It, it, um, it, it reads pretty level. It's not as sensitive to angles you'd think it would be. So I trust this, and, and I keep very little gas in the boat because I tow it a lot, and I don't like to carry the extra weight. <clears throat> like I said, the boat gets about uh, four miles to the gallon pretty reliably, and when you have 120 gallons worth of gas in it, you can you can do the math, but that's what 500 miles or so, which is uh, that's pretty ridiculous. So gas will sit around for a pretty long time if you fill it up. So I, I usually um, keep it below half a tank and. And that's no no problem at all. And I, I have a pretty high confidence due to the fill stick. Got two bilge pumps, two 1500 bilge pumps. So I went and put those in myself. I'll show you the bilge is really easy to access here. So there's the bilge, a little dirty at the moment, but you can see it's got two two bilge pumps, two float switches, a high and a low. With you can see those LED indicator lights right next to the left of the Garmin there. So. Um, if the if the high bilge pumps coming on, you know you got problems. Uh, one of the one of the more interesting things about this is there's a live well. Um, it's basically a compartment of the hull that's got um, six or yeah six plugs that you pull, and seawater comes flooding in, and, and that keeps bait pretty alive. So it's a it's a big live well. It works just just fine. And it's simple. So I know through holes. Um, well, there's a lot of through holes, but none that come into the actual bilge. No pipes or anything to break. So real straightforward. All right. So coming up under the forward deck here. Oh, by the way, this forward deck is pretty darn, um, pretty darn easy to cast on. So you can see, um, so it comes up to about my knee. So it's no big deal. It's an easy, easy step up. If you want to throw the cast net or you're fishing a flat or something, so it's pretty pretty versatile boat. But um, I use a Mantis 12 and a half pound anchor, I think, which is a seriously effective anchor. Um, coming back into the console, so this is one of my favorite things about the boat. Um, you can see um, it's got a, I think it's a half inch piece of starboard and. I actually ordered the boat unrigged, so uh, I got the dimensions for what the backing plate was. And, you know, there's a piece of core that you can screw the, uh, the starboard into. And I went ahead and did all the rigging while I was waiting for the boat to show up. And when the boat came, uh, I was able to pretty much just drop it into place uh, with with some little bit of wiring. But um, where I work, we got um, you know label makers for heat shrink and stuff like that. So it made it uh i had the time made it into a little bit of arts and crafts project but it's really easy to work on um you can see one of the things is i'm i'm six foot three and you can see i'm i'm standing up in the boat right now so it's it's about six feet headroom not not full six three but pretty good um let's see oh something interesting is i can actually lay down in this thing so there's we we take it to uh on fishing trips a lot and we go camping, and uh, sometimes I go up by myself, but you can see, there you go. So you can actually lay down inside the boat, which is pretty, pretty odd for a center console. But if you get in a pinch and you're out, out in bad weather or something like that, I find it pretty effective. We, we go camping a lot, going to the glades next month out of Flamingo, and uh, if the bugs get bad, maybe I'll spend the night here, but it's it's not the Marriott or anything like that, but it's nice and nice and clean and, and simple and you can stretch out in a pinch. So, all right, so uh, one thing that I really like about the boat is it's it's a relatively inexpensive boat. The fit and finish is, is you know, it's, no one's gonna say it's, it's better put together than a Hell's Bay or a Hinkley or something like that, but, um, it's a, it's a pretty incredible price point and the things that matter in my book, they, 
they do right. And so for an example is uh, like the way the console's joined. So you can see it's a fully glassed in seam. Um, and the, the T-top here, uh, instead of going into the floor and where you stub your toes and it's tough to keep clean and, and um, it, water gets into the core and all that, it actually goes into the side of the console right here. And um, I don't know, stuff like that, which, which I like about it. And, and for the price point, you see a lot of boats with a lot of useless stuff on them and they, they cut the corners on the stuff that matters. And, and so um, most of the people who buy these boats, it's not their first boat. They've had a bunch. They don't want to spend a lot of money, and but they know what matters. And and so, I think Lou's been around a lot of boats too, so he he knows what what uh, what goes wrong. So it shows up in the way you put it together. All right, all. So that's it. I'll try to get some. Uh, I'm going fishing tomorrow, so I'll try to get some pictures of it running um, tomorrow and put them up there. But it's uh, that's pretty much it. That's the boat. So um, don't hesitate to give Lou a call. He's a real nice guy to work with. Uh, last I heard, there's a little bit of a weight on him, which is about the only thing that, that I think people are anxious to go into a dealer and, and buy a boat. And uh, I don't think it works out that way at the moment. I think you gotta wait a little bit. But um, anyway, if you got a boat now and you can stand to wait, then uh, it's worth waiting for in my opinion. And this is what it looks like with its cover on. So um, it's kind of a pain to put a whole boat cover on. So we use the boat pretty much every weekend. So if it takes 30 minutes to put a cover on, we're less likely to use it. So I use this <clears throat> console cover. It's a uh, Sunbrella. It covers all the upholstery on the boat, which isn't that much. And I got a console, or I got a cover for the motor rather. Um, so you can, you can kind of see, it just zips up the back here. I'll try to take a picture over here. Show you what's on the inside. So you can kind of, kind of get the gist of it so all the electronics and stuff stay stay nice and dry and uh, all the upholstery stays, stays good and beyond that it's uh, it's just fiberglass and um, what little plastic there is you know around the motor and, and whatnot has got some umbrella so it pretty much takes care of itself um, I just wax it every once in a while and and stays clean there's no cushions to rot uh, no plexiglass to crack it um, just takes care of itself.